Welcome. Welcome to New Light Living Podcast. I'm Ulrika Sullivan. I'm an intuitive spiritual life coach and a galactic astrologer. Today, I have a beautiful, amazing guest with me, Julia Balaz. And welcome, Julia. Thank you, Ulrika. So happy to be here. Oh, so good. I'm so happy you're here. And today, Julia and I are going to explore uh, the significance of our galactic soul journey and how it relates to galactic astrology. It's a very uh, vast topic, as you can imagine. But Julia uh, is here also to, um, you know, play with this topic together and see where we can um, expand our collective knowledge of the relevance of of getting to understand and connect with our galactic soul journey in relation to galactic astrology, which we often um, bring in, you know, our galactic chart potentially and see what placements we have. But this, this episode is going to uh, highlight the, I would say the second part of galactic astrology which is really to tap into our soul's journey from a galactic perspective. So I'm so excited to have you, Julia, with me today. Now, before we go into the meat of this topic, I'd like you to just for those who are not familiar with who you are, if you uh, please could uh, introduce yourself. Sure. Thank you, Ulrika. Thank you so much for, first of all, um, coming with this rich topic I'm already curious how the information will come true because it's always when I meet with different people you know we we bring the best out of each other when we connect uh, with such a high vibrational topic so I'm so so excited to be here and a little bit about myself or my background how I got um, involved with galactic astrology I um, practiced QHHD modality, quantum healing hypnosis technique, as taught by Dolores Cannon. I was a full-time QHHD practitioner for almost seven years. And um, for those who are not familiar with the modality, I um, met a client in person in um, my uh, setting in beautiful southeast of um, Ireland, and uh, the clients would sit down and talk about their life experience, um, their highs and lows, and most of all, uh, what is their intention for coming to see me, usually to find answers to questions, issues, and challenges they had in their life experience, things that they couldn't somehow shift, even though they focused on it for a while. So they came to seek a regression hypnosis technique to help them go into deeply relaxed state where they can shift the brainwave states and access the deeper, wise part of us, the infinite intelligence that we are all connected to. And they want to get their kind of ego, um, um, the usual awake, controlling mind aside, relax deeper into place where they can open up to allow that greater intelligence of their own being to answer their own questions <laughs> and show them through uh, whether metaphoric stories that they've experienced in their inner mind uh, and also through all their inner senses. That's why quantum is such an amazing name for the modality because when you are in that you know, deep regressed state, you perceive everything with multiple senses at the same time. You perceive past, present and future at the same time. You perceive from multiple perspectives of not just your own being, the personality, identity that you are in, whatever is shown to you, but also from perspectives of those that are around you, even from perspectives of your own spirit guides. It's just truly very quantum. And so I had this privilege to observe people's um, uh, current life experience as they conveyed it to me through conversations we had for two, three, sometimes four hours just talking about their life. And then for about two hours, uh, witnessing their own higher self, guiding them through whatever was most appropriate for them to find answers uh, to what they were looking for. So uh, typically people would regress through uh, multiple past lives, as we would call it from the linear time sense perspective, or they would review their ancestral stories. These memories are 
uh, dormant in our own DNA, uh, right? Or just metaphoric stories that their higher self selected as a good way for them to gain a perspective that helped them understand something in their current life experience, but very often also being regressed to places that didn't look earthly um, and, uh, you know, other planets in other star systems or connecting with stars themselves or uh, what felt like, you know, portals and stargates and all kinds of like that. There's just no limit. It's it's a fascinating uh, experience to explore. And I was growing and expanding my own consciousness rapidly through that experience as I witnessed all these journeys. And as a practitioner, you kind of go under with them because you have like this super high concentrated state of being. The, the room itself shifts frequencies depending how deep they go. I always knew when they were in the deepest state, when they can access highest and more clearest uh, frequency of consciousness, when I, f I, I personally felt it physically like a magnetic force just descended into the room, like my ears were expanding. It just felt like I'm surrounded by a magnetic field that is very, very strong. And that's when I knew, oh, this is going to be good. Let's pay attention. <laughs> so um, so it was a fascinating experience. And uh, another side of the story is that I have been passionate about studying astrology from early on since my teenage years by having access to astrology books. And when I started my QHHD career, I asked every client for their birth details. Most people or many didn't know their birth time. That was okay. So even just looking at as much information as I could, I was looking at their astrological natal chart after their session. And I was just looking for uh, deepening my knowledge and understanding of astrology. And at one point, I started paying attention also to stars um, and other deep space objects. And just over time, when you observe hundreds of natal charts, as any astrologer, you would start seeing patterns, things start um, showing up and you start paying attention to certain areas of astrology and um, you discover quite fascinating things. So that was my journey of consciousness expansion and deepening my understanding of astrology as well and really the the main kind of takeaway from this whole experience for me is uh, believing and understanding a natal astrological chart serving a purpose of a quantum map to our soul journey to our soul history and based on our level of understanding of astrology we can unlock different um, aspects of that map you know, the deeper we understanding, the deeper we can go into that map and see so much richness. It feels to me infinite based on mm -hmm. how we look at it, which angle we take, which perspective we take. There's just so much packed inside our natal chart. And I'm just super excited to see a whole collective now being really excited and passionate about um, diving deeper into this topic, studying together, evolving astrology together. So I'm just so happy that you're one of our <laughs> quantum soul guidance practitioners. Um, evolving galactic astrology with this yeah yeah this this particular perspective of linking or or understanding that soul journey that that we have right and connecting with it through such techniques as qhat but also the the patterns we can see uh corresponding in in the astrology charts now um and, and I really appreciate that perspective with that we have that comes with galactic astrology that we can actually uh, expand our consciousness and our understanding of our soul's journey through this modality now. And, and that's just so, so powerful because it comes together. <laughs> it comes with the galactic perspective and, and but also linked into this rich detail of a uh, someone's soul's journey and that's so fascinating to me uh and one thing that i'm curious about your your view on is with this expansion of consciousness and as we start to relate to our being in in different realities right because that's part of what it is our soul's journey has been taking place in different realities, uh, if we call it that. Why 
would you, why would it be relevant to, in the times you are living in, uh, in your perspective, from your perspective, as far as why would it be important to, to become aware of this? I believe it, um, it puts an emphasis on the importance of us actually focusing where we wanted to focus with our initial intention before this incarnation. And especially in today's age, when we are bombarded with distractions and things that can sidetrack us, I feel understanding our overall theme of what we focused on on a soul level in multiple, multiple incarnations, we will gain a deeper sense of the importance of the very particular theme that we have for this particular lifetime. And it can become much easier to just say no to distractions, what's not for us, what's literally just like a glittery object, uh, you know, delaying our highest potential and the impact that we can have on making this world a better place. So yeah, that would be the main um, importance. And then really just to make it easier um, in, in terms of how we experience this life, because the clarity that we can gain from this can be incredibly healing, can be activating. It can you know, shift our overall frequency higher and we can we tend to experience more of that magical life experience where synchronicities align and we go more in the flow with life experience so the second or if not first uh, also important thing is the the clarity that we can gain from understanding the overall theme as we look at the galactic astrology but also the soul records um, of our overall journey across many incarnations does that mm -hmm. resonate Yes. Yes. So what I'm, what I'm hearing you say is that this bigger perspective, if you will, of our soul's journey helps really to uh, help us focus <laughs> on what yeah. really is important potentially in this life, as opposed to all the things we think is important. Yeah. <laughs> so that's huge. A metaphor just came in as you were speaking of a, uh, of a map you are placed on a map as a player and you're wandering through the terrain, navigating it as best as you can. Um, there is an element of faith that is guiding you. There is a part of your higher intelligence that has the uh, higher vision of where you're going, where you're meant to arrive eventually. But the, the avatar in your human body perspective uh, can take detours, can get distracted by, by different things. So, Again, it's just a matter of actually then knowing where we are heading. So you, you get there faster. Uh, you focus on the path, on the track that you set for yourself versus if you don't have that clarity, kind of just reiterating uh, what we said there. But that's mm -hmm. what it feels like. So I believe, you know, from what I've witnessed with the QHHD experience, seeing so many people that we, we have this inner GPS inside us and we actually are heading towards our destiny unconsciously. But doing it consciously is just so much more amazing and powerful. And you feel like you're playing with universe, with your higher self, with your spirit guides. There is just this co-creation that is just so delicious, um, mm -hmm. I want to say, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah deeper I agree. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like this. Um, yeah, the, I, I think the the metaphor that you're bringing up with the map is is brilliant because it's 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 almost like the the awareness of our soul journey actually expands the map so that we can see it from a maybe a bigger perspective in a way. Sometimes our map feels like it's it's our life here and now, right? <laughs> and and but what else is there? It's it's so many layers to this map outside our current life that we're having a perspective of living now. But then mm -hmm. it's like it it's this bigger map we fold out. <laughs> by uh, becoming aware of, of the uh, soul journey. Um, An example came in um, that, you know, we we are not aware until we look at galactic astrology and gain that perspective that we are 
the easiest path to reaching our highest destiny and potential is through working with the collective, with a group that is excited about the same thing that we are heading for. Um, it, it could be in any area of our life, but it's that group element that is important. And it would show in our chart through the 11th house, 10th house, 7th house, uh, which is all uh, uh, placements for different uh, life areas. And there could also be a trauma related to previous experience with groups that is kind of blocking us to even look in that direction. So we keep, um, you know, soldiering through our path alone, neglecting the opportunities that keep coming from a group. But then you get this consultation with uh, galactic astrology, uh, soul reading uh, consultant, and they will help you understand that actually if it'll be easier for you to 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 work through what, what was uh, kind of blocking your connection to groups because there is such a treasure and potential there. And once you find your tribe, everything will start accelerating um, and improving and just it will, your overall frequency in your life experience will be much, much higher. So that that's one example that came oh, through. Oh, that's so, so beautiful because, yeah, I mean, there's... So I'm curious also, um, going back to what you said in the beginning here and, and describing your experience with individuals through sessions. And I'm just curious to to bring it also to the, the person's experience after. What is what are some of the biggest shifts? And and maybe you haven't really been in contact with people's life progression after the sessions, but you may. <laughs> so I'm just curious to, uh, to hear what their, some of their biggest shifts in perspective actually has been. Um, yeah, they, there, there was maybe a 10% of clients that came back after a year or after two years or after six months, and they wanted to, um, explore further what else is there and um, I would have had a few that uh, had maybe four or five QHHT sessions over a period of maybe four or five years and each time their frequency was higher each time they came and they were able to go deeper and explore further beyond to what they were shown before so there's always a progression and your own higher self um, your own divine intelligence shows you only what you're ready for, what you're ready to integrate and what is most relevant for you at this time. So there's just this one lady comes to mind who, um, who, first of all, um, realized that she was involved in the planning of her current incarnation. And so many, so many clients experienced this. She was taken to a point where they were planning. And I may have mentioned it in at least one interview before that she had very, very difficult upbringing. She grew up actually in a foster home with multiple siblings, all separated at different points of their life. But during her first QHC session, she was, she was taken to a table uh, where all her siblings uh, were standing at and they were obviously planning their current incarnation. And at one point she was taken aback by the fact that it almost looks like a black comedy because they were entertained by the stories they were coming up with. They were really difficult in, in her current life experience. And just seeing that she was involved in that and that there was some higher purpose, which was also shown to her why these uh, difficult um, moments are crucial for her soul's development or for like little collective of individuals um, that she was kind of soul contracting uh, with. It uh, gave her much greater sense of peace and acceptance and just relaxing into what her life was like. It She, she stepped out of the victimhood uh, experience. That was the first big shift. It, you know, she just felt so much easier and naturally her own physical body also relaxed and wasn't as dense, wasn't as painful as a result. Um, but her fourth or fifth session, when she came, she was saying that she feels, she starts to wonder if she is maybe detaching too much from caring about everyday matters in the world. She just felt 
such peace. She felt almost like an enlightened, what it would be like if you live in an enlightened state of being where everything is perfect, no matter what it is. But it was so odd to the ego uh, perspective. It, it, ego really questioned her sanity. Like, how can you just be so cool <laughs> about absolutely everything? Uh, so then she had her experience and just really realized how important it is to anchor peace in her environment where she is, how, how important it is for uh, the earth's frequency and the collective and that no actually she's she's doing excellent <laughs> that's yeah. one example so you know that there is definitely overall shift um or people feel much more connected i would say the overall um theme after experience of something like that is feeling deeper sense of connection with their inner gps with their mm. divine intelligence yeah that sounds like something that we all want right that peace yeah, and yeah. and uh relating to our bigger map <laughs> and see that it actually okay mm -hmm. it makes sense uh, yeah. from a higher perspective what we're going through in this life mm -hmm. yeah and coming back to um uh, our soul's journey from a galactic perspective um it also comes with some sort of perspective of our soul contract does it? Um, yeah. Because the soul contract often, in my experience, is, is attached to, you know, our current in, incarnation and what we <laughs> what we plan to um, be carrying out and transmuting uh, this, this life. But what uh, I'm curious to learn a little bit more about uh, how you see soul contracts from, you know, based on your experience, both because in, in galactic astrology, we uh, often look at someone's soul journey and their soul contract, both from uh, individual soul perspective, but also ancestral, as you, as you mentioned. But also what often is getting highlighted is the collective part of a soul contract. Um, I'm curious to, to learn your views on the importance to connect with that piece as well now as we move forward yes and also contracts with a planet with a uh, contract with a the star system um too because many are here um who agreed to commit to the planetary evolution and it ties in with the collective uh, contract as well that feels very very strongly for many people and uh, those actually, for, for people like that, in their QHHT session, usually when they regressed to the most important moment that was kind of past the human relationships experiences, they connected to their soul essence consciousness being tied to a planetary intelligence or star intelligence. And they really felt like they are they're here for the planet earth for her evolution for her healing for her ascension so you know when you realize that and you remember that initial uh compassionate um allowance of your soul being pulled into this star system to this planet you you gain a much higher understanding of what is really significant and important in your everyday life experience and what isn't. You you really feel much more in a flow and allowing something um, highly intelligent to guide you through life and help you navigate. Uh, but in terms of like individual contracts, they often span over many incarnations and the story, the connections, uh, especially, you know, to me, it feels like a soul group, soul family that keeps incarnating together into um, a time, space, continuum in different star systems. You, you journey together as a collective of souls, as a frequency, as a ray of, of, of different fragment of source expressing itself through us. So you know, especially through QHSG sessions, you can see then how uh, these contracts are made and how they span over multiple incarnations, because that was always so beautiful for to, to witness for me to see clients um, being regressed to a different life story experience and 
realizing who is who in that mm-hmm. story. And then another lifetime within the same session, again, different scenario, who is who in their current life mm-hmm. experience, and then feeling the overall theme that was continuous through many incarnations and realization of what is kind of the core um, theme that their soul is exploring, not just through one incarnation, but through many. For example, uh, there, there was a lady who re- who connected to Sirius star system, uh, such a common story, especially in our collective, um, being passionate and committed to learning about the universal mysteries, universal laws, and how to um, develop the human body technology to harmonize the body, mind, and soul, and spirit, and, um, you know, like the studying through the mystery schools, doing that over many incarnations in series, and then committing to supporting those that have not yet studied these universal mysteries, supporting a planetary um, ascension, incarnating in dur- during important evolutionary leaps, like quantum leaps, just like what we are experiencing on Earth now. And uh, this particular story, she went to Orion to assist that um, the hu- humanity there who are going through polarity games, very much like what we have on Earth. I feel like what we have here is the echo of what was going on on some mm-hmm. of the planetary systems in um, planets in Orion. So she was assisting there. And then between different incarnations from Orion, she always returned back to Sirius. And now she's here on Earth. And she was here 10,000 years ago uh, in times of uh, ancient Egypt or Mesopotamia very much focusing on the same thing, being a teacher and guide and teaching the human body that she kept incarnating into different bodies in different uh, times. But still the focus was kind of overall the same. And the commitment was to the planet Earth at this time and supporting the collective evolution of consciousness, not just here, but also in Orion, but it was spanning from Sirius. And actually, if you looked beyond Sirius, she came there as a frequency of Uh, this kind of like archetypal blueprinter being that was like this ray of source with carrying that blue frequency of teacher sovereignty strength protection you know and that the perfect match for that was serious um, star system with a planet that is committed to this um, setting of evolutionary forces so it's just amazing how there's just this one team overall that goes through multiple incarnations through multiple star systems mm-hmm. and then when we looked at astrology it was all there it was yeah. just just one example of many yes yes this is a great example because yeah it's it's also that relationship with the themes in our lives that we feel are very familiar, <laughs> yeah. but they actually go beyond this experience that we're having in this physical life here. And, what comes uh, through strongly yeah. here with that, what you just said is that uh, I believe we, you know, we develop certain level of expertise in a, in certain uh, life area. And especially when we are called to incarnate in really crucial times where so many changes are happening in such quantum leaps uh, for a whole civilization, then you you are assigned to do what you can do best because it's so important mm-hmm. right now for the whole planet for all of us to to give our best. Yeah. So yeah, oh, do that's that. beautiful. Yeah. And this can be, you know, not just uh, the spiritual teachings, but I've seen this with um, focus on agriculture. There was a farmer who's journey like this would lead all the way to Lyra where he was passionate about agriculture and learning all about the crops and um, all that like he, the the sole memory was of having an amazing piece of land where he folk that was his main focus already as a human in Lyra um, star system planet in a mm. in a Lyra star system 
and how that was continuous through other planets all the way here to Earth. So, you know, others would have a high focus on animals or art. Um, one that I remember would be well-known um, artists in Hades, in Pleiades, and here on Earth as well. So it could be anything, not just mm -hmm. spiritual teachings. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that's because it brings us to um, the desire to bring out our full set of talents and gifts that we either are continuing to explore, right? How we can express that here. Yes, now. absolutely. And I'm sorry, Ulrike, I just want to add one more yes. thing that, that I've witnessed many times is that uh, sometimes there is a negotiation between the soul about to incarnate on earth and the spirit guides who have higher intelligence, who can comprehend um, beyond time and space. They can comprehend multidimensionally. They can really just, they're part of the fabric so they can consult, you know, what is the best timeline and they can see all ends at the same time. So uh, I've seen souls negotiating saying, okay, if you want me to do all that, not going to be easy. Um, uh, in return, I would like to have an experience all this. Like we, we <laughs> can <laughs> create our own conditions. In particular, um, there is one lady who, <laughs> who um, actually had not so good condition that she created for herself. She told her spirit guides to not uh, obviously help her. Like not, sh she wanted to be cut off from the spiritual assistance because she wanted to do it in a way that, that many others would do with, they, they, you know, you feel cut off from help. So she was like, don't come talk to me. Don't come <laughs> helping me. I'm going to just try to figure it out by myself. Um, so, and then at one point where she was kind of calling on them, uh, she, they, they said, we, we, we are always here. We are, we would love to, but you told us not to. And she's like, oh yeah, I did that. Didn't I, <laughs> uh, as an example. Oh, well, that, that example just shows us how, how we are also with increased awareness of our soul's journey at this magnitude also can help us see you know that there is no good there is no bad really uh it's just really an experience that we <laughs> largely have selected ourselves and and if that brings more peace and an ease into our perspective of how we experience life here now mm. that that's beautiful now, one thing that I'm curious about is if we bring it all back to this experience of using a modality like QHAT, often currently that is guided by a practitioner. Yes. And uh, where I'm going with this is also how, how you see this um, going in the future, um, because and really where I'm coming from is that we're, we're uh, developing our own abilities more and more. I, at least that's how I, I perceive it, uh, connecting more with abilities such as telepathy or um, channeling, or there might be also abilities that we haven't names for yet, that we are yet to discover within ourselves. Um if we look into the future and, and um, how, what's your perspective on connecting with our soul's journey on, on our own, so to say, instead of yeah. under hypnosis or guidance. And, and I'm thinking like also wider now because the perception of we have had healers in so many generations, right? But the shift over discovering all of these healing abilities within ourselves um, where do you see this going and, and, you know, focusing on soul journey, um, connectivity, if you will. Such a great um, topic or question to bring. There is a phenomenon occurring collectively that QHHD practitioners started to uh, reporting 
within the community, the forum that QHG practitioners have. And it started several years ago where, and it started happening in my own sessions too, that we started noticing people are going, people start to access their soul memories and their higher uh, guidance without needing to be regressed um, mm -hmm. and I've and especially towards the last year of my QHHT practice I had many clients who while still sitting in their chair during the interview suddenly it was obvious that they are already in the different uh, lifetime experience and even then the higher self-guidance uh, was coming true so we conducted the whole rest of the session <laughs> that way uh, it you know our consciousness collectively absolutely is evolving to a point where it is going to feel very natural for us to just close our eyes and set the intention to receive answers about something that we um, need to know about at any particular moment. And we are just like using the internet. I almost feel like it's a really great practice run through the internet. You just need to define a very clear instruction of what you're looking for and then the google search will deliver you the answer or, or the ai so it it starts to uh, be experienced this way with many people too where they we just need to create that quiet space where we can allow the information to come true but also first of all define a clear intention of what we are looking for um and also for what purpose you know so there are firewalls and safety pins everywhere in the quantum uh, field of Akashic records of soul records um, to just like with the internet so it's a really nice metaphor through our experience of how what we can kind of expect there are many people who are navigating this way of operating very smoothly already and of course many who are still very very behind with all this but everyone in their own timing so I believe you know it's such a large volume of uh, nine is it nine billion already I'm not sure of um, humans on earth, there will always be uh, room for practitioners and the middleman uh, guiding people through. What I always felt very strongly about through my QHG practice is to guide people uh, or, or even creating a moment in their session, letting their higher self tell them what is the best way for them to connect also outside of the session. And that was also the reason why I felt inspired to one of my first course was on your higher self connection where i was just sharing everything that was coming through the sessions to help people have that direct connection in their everyday life experience um so yeah i believe we are we are heading there certainly mm -hmm. once we once we set the intention that we want to deepen our connection we are guided in so many ways um because there's such support from the other side for us to have a good connection so the intention is the driving force of the magic that then happens. Yeah. So I'd like to um, ask a personal question too um, around what what is the best thing? If you look back in, in on your life and what you know now about your own soul's journey, uh, what is the best thing that has come out of that insight for you? Oh, such a good big, big question. Hmm. The best would be peace, really. Peace and acceptance and excitement. Um, and just just uh, recognizing the endless blessings that are here for us and the immense amount of support that is here. Even though I may not feel it all the time, especially when you're not you know you're not meant to be conversing with higher intelligence all the time we also have these mundane moments where we just take care of the here and now really mundane stuff that doesn't require a huge amount of intelligence so um and you know it's the contrast it's, it's really not meant to be the flat line experience uh on earth so just really embracing it all and not taking things too seriously because that was one of almost constant feedback when people you know just came out opened their eyes were like you know stretching and all that and then just quietly sitting reflecting and one was one of the first things they would always say my god it's just a game isn't it <laughs> <laughs> 
so many people said that and um it just you know sometimes we take think we take things way too seriously and especially when it's this crucial transit that is really making uh, the energy feel so intense but they're passing by they're passing so quickly um and we feel lighter once the intense transits um you know move through it's like the clouds so it's just nice to see it when you especially when you see multiple incarnational stories you that's also another uh, side effect of that and to not take this role so seriously it, it's just another way of us experiencing what we can do and what is possible as a creative being in a human in a physical form and we tend to then have more fun with it yeah. feel more free to explore what's possible oh so beautiful so uh, wrapping up this episode one of the things that uh, I'd like to ask you um, is what it, what is something that you wish people understood or knew about, you know, our galactic soul journey and, and galactic astrology? And what is one thing that you wish people knew? that there is the continuation of our consciousness, that we don't just die and that's it. Like if that could be a common knowledge, I like that's probably the number one that I would hope and wish for shifting in a collective uh, understanding of who we really are as a consciousness uh, using this temporary form to experience itself. You know, and just before you ask that question and kind of ties in with that, the story um, that comes to mind is we are, you know, when we are not aware of that, when we believe we are just this person, this body in all eternity, and that's it. <laughs> we have this natural curiosity drive that guides us to certain topics, focusing on something that really you know, we keep getting to that same thing that peak, that speaks our curiosity, exploring something, for example, um, developing psychic abilities. And then, you know, the articles or the videos that we always go to is something to do with esoterics. But we feel um, insecure or not sure about actually maybe doing it professionally because like we've never done it yet. When you actually give yourself a chance to do it there you start noticing actually something natural happens here and somehow I just know how to do it but because we are not aware of previous incarnations when we have done this and really well you know we, we keep blocking it but if we only knew that we could the journey continues and if we can accept that we have acquired skills and qualities that we actually take with us they're they're deposited inside our soul's higher heart center and if we can acknowledge and accept them we can access them and activate them again in this incarnation that's why it comes easier to some people to uh, tune into their psychic abilities versus others who may have not been exploring this in previous incarnation uh, incarnations so Another example would be astrologers. There's so many who have studied astrology before. Astrology was very common and uh, and highly respected through the history of humanity until maybe two, three hundred years ago. So there are many uh, souls who have studied and devoted their life to astrology. The big shift for me was my last QHHD session. I had seven in total with different practitioners for just really exchanging experiences. But the last one, before I fully decided to publish the courses on galactic astrology, the, my last session was um, regressing to a lifetime first on a ship uh, where I was the person that was mapping the stars and mapping, charting maps. And we were exploring unknown land and I was writing maps. So I was exploring something unexplored yet right and then second life after that that was, that was shown to me was an astrologer maybe 1700s who was exploring aspects of astrology that weren't yet known 
Um, mm -hmm. I, in particular, the way I understood it from what was shown to me was the influence of of planets on potential collective themes. There was already um, something like newspapers, like there there were things where we could read about what was happening within the town area, and I started looking at what do planets, you know, what was transiting at the time and could that have had impact? And then I had discussions with uh, fellow uh, colleagues, what looked like some university, maybe somewhere in England or somewhere, there were, you know, scholars and well-respected men, and they were arguing with me about the possibility or not possibility of that, dismissing or not dismissing what I may have discovered. So again, it was a story of discovering something that wasn't yet there and when these two life were shown to me i i released my inner block to pursuing what i was guided to naturally in this incarnation and i just felt such a sense of deep permission to do what i'm doing today <laughs> um, and i never stopped um, yeah and you know. here we are <laughs> yeah yeah but it was a really really big breakthrough and i was so so grateful for yeah. that experience yeah, so. and uh, what you're creating now is amazing with the galactic astro galactic astrology community. So, thank you for oh, uh, oh, be crazy. being you all. Uh, the 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 bringer of that in this life. So, lastly, um, I know there's a lot of listeners and and uh, viewers who are curious about this whole topic. From your perspective, what are some of the resources in addition to getting a, a galactic astrology soul journey reading of course <laughs> that you would recommend to somebody that just kind of oh this topic sounds like i i need to explore this further where would you direct them um in addition to a reading sure well our galactic astrology youtube channel has a lot of videos especially if people scroll further down and look at different playlists we've we've put videos together in playlists um, where they can learn about different star systems and what it may mean when they uh, show in our natal chart so that may be a good way of for free resources and if they can purchase a book or even the cards from lisa royal hold um galactic heritage cards i just love how she channeled information about maybe seven different star most commonly known star systems and a perspective of human collective evolution in these particular star systems and the struggles they've been through what it um, how it serves them now and what is the highest potential of of their evolution i just feel that reading um text uh, reading about uh, history of different collectives from that higher perspective of evolution will train our mind to perceive our own human evolution from this beautiful expanded perspective too of our past where we are now and where we are heading and um, I feel it just brings a lot of grounded wisdom in terms of how we then navigate even galactic astrology and our own soul history mm. would you agree I would agree. Resources. Yes. I, I love the resources that you just mentioned. Yes, absolutely. Um, so let my last question is, uh, and also if there's anything, um, of course, visit Galactic Astrology YouTube channel. Any other way to connect with you, Julia, as far as accessing your courses and other resources uh, for you particularly um, that you want to mention? Yes, absolutely. I wholeheartedly recommend the Higher Self Connection course. It's really easy to follow with plenty of practical tools and tips and just the comment section, the feedback there is always wonderful to see. It it can really kind of start the journey of deeper deepening our connection with the inner guidance. And that's such an important part of then also exploring our own astrology chart that inner guidance can be so, so helpful when we look at su such huge amount of data. So if if the viewer is wired uh, in a way of uh, enjoying studying a lot of information, putting data together, finding patterns, very kind of 
almost like an explorer researcher type of person, mm -hmm. then definitely you will love and enjoy, I believe, the courses on galactic astrology that you can find on my website. Or if you are someone who maybe lacks time and patience to do something like that, you just prefer for someone to deliver the information to you and honoring how much time they've invested and spent doing all that and studying all this, then definitely looking at the practitioner's uh, page on my website, scrolling through the beautiful profiles uh, with you know each galactic astrology soul reading practitioner. They have their own additional qualifications that kind of enrich the whole modality. They all have unique uh, flavor to add to their reading. So whoever you resonate with most, and certainly Orica is such a high um, you know reviews and uh, testimonials from your clients. So you know people can explore that too and see where it takes them mm. yeah definitely go visit uh, julia's website and i also uh, will place a link to access her whole set of courses in the description box so it's easy for easy ask access so my yeah. the last question i want to ask you julia is what do you live by from very early on, from my early childhood, I have I, I had strong affinity to teachings of Jesus. And there was one teaching in particular that I took very closely to my heart and lived by it. It was in my mind throughout uh, my childhood. And it was don't do to others as you wouldn't want them do to you. I'm probably paraphrasing. <laughs> I learned it in Slovakian. Uh, that's where I grew up in Slovakia. So that that's one. And then just um, striving for personal betterment, like personal evolution is just really aligning with evolutionary forces. So doing better and better and better and being okay with doing making mistakes uh, genuine mistakes knowing that we learn from them and how can i do better next time and just developing virtues as as much as possible um that's my yeah beautiful thank process. you for sharing that so thank you everyone for listening and viewing this uh, New Light Living podcast episode. Thank you so much, Julia, for your time, your wisdom, and the beautiful community uh, of galactic astrology. I invite everyone to come visit us uh, there uh, on galacticastrology.com with Julia and myself uh, and many others. So thank you so much. Uh, I will be back soon with another episode. Thank you very much, Julia. Thank you. Much love to you all.